free. A stroke of brilliance from your Benjamin Moore dealer. And you decorated my life. Call 1-800-6-PAINT-6 for the dealer nearest you. You decorated my life. Presenting just a few of the special reasons why over 2 million members and hundreds of New York businesses rely on GHI, a health plan whose focus is on people, not earnings per share, whose statewide network of 34,000 hospital, medical, and dental providers promotes real choice and cost containment, a health plan that quite simply makes sense. GHI, the good news in health care. For a teammate you can always count on. For a teammate who always comes through in the clutch. Bank on the Dime Savings Bank of New York. Dime, the bank New York sports fans call their own. The bank you can call your own. Rodriguez, Carlos Rodriguez belted his first big league home run. This guy view provided by Perry Ellis. What you are is more important than what you wear. Tony, here's a fellow who since 1987 in the minor leagues coming into this year had hit a grand total of three home runs. He did two at Pawtucket this year. Since 1987 in pro ball, he did five home runs, and he hits one out here. That encompasses a minor league career of a little over 2,500 at bats, and usually minor league ballparks are a little shorter. So his home run ties it at three for Roger Clements. Luis Polonia walks, stole a base and scored in the first. He's also grounded to second. One ball to Polonia. Slashed out of play foul. One and one. One of those times you rotate your infielders as Buck Showalter's done all year. You rotate Scott Fletcher. Give him a break after a night game last night. And move Naring to second base. Put in Carlos Rodriguez. And he ties it for you. Greenwell into the sun. He's got it. A few clouds now making it a little easier on the outfielders. So there's one out here in the bottom of the fifth. It'll bring up Boggs. Wade single home run in the first. He walked in the third. Little too high to Boggs. The inner defense has had a little to do with some of the scoring today on both sides. The Budweiser quote book, it's over. I feel like I've been in pinstripes my whole life. Wade Boggs and his Red Sox memories. Fastball strike. I would guess you win seven batting titles in a Red Sox uniform. That's great verbiage. It sounds good, but don't tell me Wade doesn't go home once in a while and think of all the, the good memories. The last couple of years there when he struggled, had some problems with his eyes. With a strap, Tinsley playing deep. Boggs been on base all three times. Remember his return to Fenway last season? Some people booed him, and by the time he finished his four base at night, they were standing and giving him a standing ovation. And he did say then that was one of his most pleasant memories in Fenway. Just serves this one into center, dropping in front of Tinsley. Mattingly up with one out, one on. He is lined to Greenwell on left and hit the ball sharply into a DP in the third. Pulled foul by Brian Butterfield, the first base coach. Don pushed the average up severely on that West Coast trip. Started that trip about 250 or 60, I guess, and added up at 290 mark. Fuck ball, nothing in two. Well, that one disappeared on Mattingly. Clemens has been fairly strategic with the use of that pitch. He did give up the base hit to Stanley with it. This one a good one. Just completely disappeared on Mattingly. The bottom falls right out. Like a lot of great pitchers, even though he gave up a run in the first and walked Polonia, he established the fastball early. Fouled out of play by Don. 
Okay. Count will stay at nothing and two. Mattingly almost took this one right out of Barry Hill's mitt. Two strikes. Trying to protect from the Skyview cam here. See, that's what's amazing about Mattingly. You're right. That ball is back almost by his belly button when he hit it, but he saw a fork ball. How many guys? Could be protecting against a fork ball and still foul off a 90 plus fastball. Mattingly and Boggs, how many mm -hmm. else? One of the difference between Boggs and Mattingly is uh, Mattingly a lot of times will take that pitch out of the strike zone he's protecting and put it in play for an out. Boggs usually fouls it off. One and two with Boggs at first, one out, 3 3 ball game. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Fouled out of play again. You know, it's almost as if the captain, knowing he put the ball in play in this 3 3 ball game and Boggs on first, would like the runner started. I don't know if I'm getting that. Maybe he wants the signals turned over a couple times. I don't know if he can send a message to Willie Randolph. Boggs is not going. Fortunately, he wasn't. Two and two. Buck Showaller talking about Willie Randolph, who's getting into the swing of things, never had coached third base before, talking about all of a sudden now they're getting a rhythm going on the West Coast. Signal flash one time, Willie picks it up, gives it to the runner and to the batter. It's, uh, it's not an easy thing to have to do what Willie Randolph did. Talk about Randolph, you think there are a couple of great second basemen in this ballpark today? Frank White coaching first for the Red Sox and Willie, mm -hmm. the third base for the Yankees. They were the state of the art during their era at second base. In the right field corner, will it stay fair? It doesn't. Don gets the weight out front, but he keeps the bat back and just enough to flick it. Remember the home run he flicked the last home stand? Off speed pitch down, boom, it was in the seats. We're seeing some great at bats from Boggs and Mattingly here against Clemens. Just the sequence of pitches. Between Clemens and Mattingly here, and those battles make for a fun afternoon. And Mattingly just missing an extra base hit into the right field corner. Well, I think the Steve Hurt piece, they're always interesting, was especially interesting in our pregame talking about the rise in walks, home runs, and the precipitous rise in strikeouts. Well, talking about not being many guys you want to protect the plate, it's all or nothing, but we're seeing Boggs and Matting in this game show you something completely different. Might be two. Marion. Rodriguez can't get a throw off. Had he gotten it off, there would have been no play. So Marion to Rodriguez gets the lead runner, keeps him out of scoring position. Now ball not hit overly hard and Nairing had the long throw back to second base for the force on Boggs and by that time Boggs was on top Rodriguez and there was no chance to double up Mattingly at first. Two outs for Danny Tartable who was popped high to short and then singled and scored in the fourth. A strike. You know, we talk about Clemens velocity but you see the different actions on his fastball that would have a little cutting action sailed away once in a while it'll tail in and there'll be times when he'll sink it I think that's what he did to Madden the first time up so he's got three pitch off one and then when he drops down the only time he has in this game to Mike Gallego just missed that makes how many pitches off one pitch the fastball we've seen four different pitches off one and this one's 95 as Tarnable tries to catch up. Nothing in two to Danny. Check swing, foul to the Yankee dugout. Might have been his fork ball as he took a lot off it. Don't think it was a slider. His slider is harder than that. So he'll show you about four different speeds and showing a couple of different arm angles. Take a look what Barry Hill's thinking about. Fastball away. Fouled off. You can see it's one signal with the same thing. The little finger 
The right-handed batter, left-handed to little fingers, one fastball, nobody on second. Little finger means a fastball away. Some guys will put a one down, touch either of the thighs in or out. Some will use one fastball in, two fastball away, and then go to the curve or slider for number three. Too low, one ball, two strikes. Don't know if it's possible to wear Roger Clemens down as strong and as great as he is, but the Yankees are doing a heck of a job. Yep. Working the count, working the count. He got him on the splitter. So, Roger Clemens gets his fifth strike, a first one swinging. We'll go to the sixth. Red Sox and Yankees tied at three. What would you do with a Motorola pager? Never miss a meeting. What would you do? Mom's at home! Pager. What about you? All right, you got the pager number, right? We're, We're going, going out. out. Cool, this works. What would you do? You could go anywhere, do anything, and still keep in touch with the people you want to keep in touch with. So what are you waiting for? Get the pager. It's affordable, it's portable from Motorola. These days, even old George is watching every dollar. <laughs> and you know how I like to eat. That's why I like Monarchy so much. At Monarchy, I get fast, high quality service. And I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. Besides, <laughs> they always have such great snacks around. Mr. Foreman, um, that, that was our lunch. Now more than ever, at Monarchy, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Teamwork. It's the cornerstone of any championship season. It makes good teams great. It's what makes great teams dynasties. And it's beautiful to watch. MCS fast, responsive service and Canon technology are a team you can count on. Nobody knows office technology as well as Canon. Nobody knows Canon as well as MCS. They work together like this. MCS Canon. One is a great reason to buy the other. Here's something new for your sensitive teeth. No way. My dentist wants me to use Sensodyne, remember? This is Sensodyne. New Sensodyne with baking soda. Well? No pain. And I love that clean feeling. Sensodyne. Now with baking soda. New York Yankees baseball here on MSG is brought to you in part by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bun. Wayne Stats, Tony Kubek. The rivalry continues. Jimmy Key shuts down the Red Sox yesterday. The Red Hot Red Sox today. Melito Perez and Roger Clemens in a 3-3 ball game. Charlie Moss, the trainer, right now his pride project, project, Otis Nixon, trying to get him back in the lineup from a hamstring pull. One ball to Mike Greenwell. Greenwell, Vaughn, and Dawson. Took that first pitch, Tony, and it's something that in the past Greenwell has a difficult time working the count. And it's hard to criticize him. He hit 400 last year when he went after the first pitch. And still, he realizes that there are times it could be to his advantage to work the count a little bit. He's a healthier player this year, had some problems. Perez misses inside, goes three balls and no strikes again. Malido, after getting the first two outs in the fifth, had retired 12 Red Sox batters in a row, and then Carlos Rodriguez, 3 2, two out home run tight end. Three and one. Yeah, Greenwell was saying before the ball game, he said, Man, he said, just it seemed like just a couple of years ago, I was the rookie, the kid. He said, I've got 10 years in, 30 years old, and I'm one of the veteran players. Red Sox are gradually swinging toward youth, changing their team around. Greenwell walks, leading off the sixth. While Melito regroups, let's go to Mike Crispino and the sports desk. Tony and Tiger Stadium shortstop Chris Gomez is having a career day. He hit a homer off Chris Basio earlier in the game. In the sixth, he goes downtown against Bill Risley, the first and second homers of his career. Mike, you're going to have to make a comeback with Carlos Rodriguez here with a home run, and now Chris Gomez <laughs> with a couple. We're going to give you a uni. One ball, no strikes to Mo Vaughn after Greenwell had walked. 
Mo struck out in the splitter in the first, and it was robbed by Mattingly of a, of a double, maybe only a single if O'Neill gets the carom. That was in the fourth. Mo Vaughn right back in his home territory. I'll tell you, a lot of, a lot of fans down from Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and not all Red Sox fans. I mean, it's... They're mixed breeds. There goes the runner. Stanley's throw. He got it. Mike Stanley unloaded in a hurry. Drew Cole with a second base umpire. Pops up the right hand as they get Greenwell. They've been attempting more steals this year. It started in the spring, but Stanley makes a terrific throw. And a good pitch. The pitch is up. That helps Stanley. And this is the 14th time the Red Sox have been caught trying to steal. See, I, I got a question, you know, having Greenwell steal here. I mean, Stanley makes a nice play and taking nothing away from anybody, but you got Mo Vaughn up, your cleanup hitter. You got Perez in trouble. He walked the guy, and the game is tied. And you erase a base runner. The hole was open on the right side where Mo might sneak one through. Mattingly holding Greenwell. It changes the complexion of this inning for Perez. Three and one. You got to cherish those 27 outs that you're given in this game over nine innings. That might not be one of the times that Butch Hobson did. That was Earl Weaver's philosophy. Ooh. You want to make the outs at the plate and not on the bases. Shatter back. Ball sneaks through. Diego diving can't get it. One out, one on for the Red Sox. You talk about a bat exploding. That one did. Vaughn carried the handle of the bat down to first base with him, and the rest of the bat fell apart. Just out of the reach of Gallego. Now it's the Hawk, Andre Dawson. Uh, looked like he had some sinking action outside part of the plate. A lot of teams tried to bust Mo Vaughn in. His first year or so, he was frustrated inside. What did Easter do? He said, hey, move up on the plate more. Dare him to go in there. This will be playable for Mattingly. Two outs. I mean, hitters always have a rapport with the hitting instructor. But you know, early this morning, when I saw Mike Easter going down to the hitting cage with Hatcher and Mo Vaughn, it's like, I mean, like a big brother is what it is. And uh, I guess that hitting instructor's got to be a psychologist. And you're not going well. Keep pumping the guy up. There are now two down. Collect the pieces of that bat. Even Mike Rourke, the pitching coach, looks it over. Scott Cooper is struck out and fly to center. Nice block. Stanley prevents Vaughn from getting into scoring position in this 3 3 ball game. Cooper, another guy, you know. He's been helped by Easter opening him up a little bit, getting to pull the ball, but you know, you wonder if he's been able to take advantage of the lively baseball at a two home run game, one to the opposite field, uh, into the screen at Fenway. 87, the lively ball, a lot of guys got helped. I mean, there were home run totals that were out of sight. Pace this year is ahead of that. Two and nothing to Cooper. So Perez behind the hitter again in this inning. Didn't Witten hit another tape major shot yesterday? For the Cardinals. Yep. John Habian got the win in that ball game. And Franco had trouble. I mean, Witten's Franco. strong enough to hit him out of sight, but he's had a couple that they're measuring 450. I, heard, I think it was 470 470. Or 475. And of course, Mark Witten, who belonged to the Blue Jays, then went to Cleveland, had the four home run game last year to go down in baseball history. This misses away. Three and one to Scott Cooper. Buck Showalter now seeing something he doesn't like. Pitch count. Something with a delivery dropping down. Behind in the count again. Gets on the phone to the bullpen. Now Melito's had a 3-1 count on three of the four hitters in this inning. It was Don Paul getting his jacket off. He got one in. 
on Cooper. Boggs drifts toward the line, battles the sun. He's got it. So a leadoff walk, and then Greenwell caught stealing with Vaughn up. So middle of the six here at Yankee Stadium. We're still tied at three. Oh, I'm bored. Let's count the palm trees again. Why are you looking at me like that, Iggy? You okay? <laughs> Cut it out. You're weirding me, man. Stop looking at me like that, would ya? You're creeping me out. Cut that out, man. <laughs> For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Iggy, you're gonna twist my head off. Nobody Beats the Wiz Price Patrol Exhibit A. Ten cassettes purchased from a national music chain, $109.90. The same ten cassettes at Nobody Beats the Wiz, $79.80. Ten CDs from a national music chain, $173.90. The same ten CDs at Nobody Beats the Wiz, $119.80. Beginning to notice a trend, at Nobody Beats the Wiz, we shop, you save. Our price is right every day. Any faucet can turn on water. Kohler faucets give it shape. Change the flow. Once you turn on a Kohler faucet, you'll never want plain water again. The full line of Kohler products are available at these locations. problems to AMCO centers. AMCO, the people who know transmissions. Double A, MCO. New York Yankees baseball is brought to you in part by Kohler, America's leading manufacturer of stylish, intelligently designed faucets and fixtures for your bathroom and kitchen. The bold look of Kohler, enhancing the way you live. I'm probably the only one in the ballpark who's had a chance to go to Kohler, Wisconsin and see those displays. Roger Clements will pitch to Paul O'Neill, Randy Velarde, and Bernie Williams in the bottom of the sixth. In a 3-3 ball game, just seven base hits in this game. The Yankees have four. The defense have hurt the pitchers once for each team. And when Roger Clements comes out, Butch Hobson gets his bullpen going. Ball one to Paul. Flares it foul out of play. One and one. O'Neill walked in the first. On on an error after Tartable got an infield base hit the third. O'Neill hit a ball to the right of Naring the second baseman. It stayed down. Missed it. He kicked it. They gave him an error. Both those runs came on to score. Stanley with two outs, chopping a ball up the middle for two runs batted in. Fork ball misses, two and one. Tony threw five. Clemens had made 105 pitches. And he has generally said that the day he pitches is the easy day for him. And he, he does spend a, a lot of time working to make himself in as good a shape as he is. Scott Bankhead. Excuse me, Dwayne Scott Bankhead began to throw when this inning started. Two and one pitch to Paul. Fouled out of play again. Two and two. He's a little bit like lefty, Steve Carlton. His vigorous workout, he figured this is the easy day. Terry Mulholland, who pitches tomorrow against Joe Hesketh, similar. And, yep. and, you know, I think for the first time tomorrow, the Yankee fans, and Scooter and Bobby Mercer and Paul Olden are going to see. Mulholland with his best stuff. If he brings tomorrow what he's brought the last couple of outings on the West Coast, mm -hmm. I mean, he really was in a groove out there. Full count to O'Neill. And, uh, you know, left handers uh, can have fun in this ballpark when they throw like uh, Terry Mulholland does. Tony, just to update uh, something you brought up earlier, our crack staff here, uh, led by Leon Schweid and a little research, Michael Jordan hitting 273. With 15 runs batted in, eight steals, and 29 strikeouts. He had a three hit point. game yesterday. He's made three errors during the season. Full count to Paul O'Neill.
It is not a full house, but there have got to be 40,000 and change in the ballpark today. Right center field bleachers packed, left center almost full, not quite. Another full count pitch from Clemens. Base hit by Paul O'Neill. Boy, he has learned to do that. Rick Downs has got him protecting, using the entire field, especially with two strikes. So Paul is on in this 3-3 game, leading off the bottom of the six. He's been on base three times. Tony, how much effect do you think just having Boggs and Mattingly as a teammate, as well as working with Rick Down, has on O'Neill as we see him take this 3-2 pitch and shoot it the other way? Well, I think that there is quite a bit of effect. Hitting is catching. Watching good hitters or great hitters like Boggs and Mattingly has got to be catching. Paul O'Neill did take about 80 base on balls one year at Cincinnati. Didn't show that last year. What you say is accurate, I think. Watching these guys was also being familiar this year right off the bat with American League pitchers, parks, style of pitching. Butch Hobson with a long conversation. With Roger Clements and his infield. Roger may have talked him into this, keeping him in. With Bankhead warming up. And Randy Velarde, who is grounded into fielder's choice, called out on strikes in the fourth. And they will be looking for a bunt. Cooper tied at third. Vaughn will be charging. Velarde hit and run. Swings at it. Should get him. He missed him. Rodriguez got there too late. Took the tag way in front of the bag. Hobson will argue. The ball tailed right into the runner O'Neill who gets a stolen base. And Rodriguez on the run gets caught in front of the bag. Hobson's going to argue the point. With Drew Coble, here's another look. First pitch. You can see Velarde try to give O'Neill some protection. Whoa, that's and close. And O'Neill on that bag. You can see the ball tail. Take another look. The sky view provided by Perry Ellis. What you are is more important than what you wear. Carlos Rodriguez was trying to hold his position as long as he could on the hit and run. Taking it on the run. The ball tailing in and Another look. Now look. Let's see if we can pick up where O'Neill is on the bag when the tag finally occurs. Paul goes in, sliding on the bag, and there's the tag. It might one of those where Drew Coble at second, you know, you use the old thing, well, you tagged him high. It yep. doesn't really matter if you tag him before he gets to the base. But, you know, he's watching the tag in the belt area, and you can't really see that, and at the same time, where the foot is in relation to the bag. There's going to be an argument either way. I think if Rodriguez could have gotten there a little quicker, it might have been different. Now he squares to bunt, popped up, but it will be uncatchable. Two strikes on Velarde, and remember, Velarde also was not a good pitch for Barry Hill to throw on. Low and away at the backhand, and Velarde swung at it. Which sometimes can mean, a, oh, just a split second difference at second, and O'Neill got the call. Nothing in two now to Randy Velarde. Hitting in the sixth spot today with Bernie Williams, who's hitting that spot on occasion, did last year. With Bernie hitting seventh because he is slumping. He got him on a cut fastball, maybe a slider. One out, one out in the sixth. Randy tried to defend against that and hit it the other way and couldn't do it. That's a slider, I believe. Yep, a little slider. They had it about 87. You can see the ball move away from him. The Yankees have had base runners in every inning except the second when Clemens struck out the side. Give an idea how overpowering Roger can be. We've had him at 96 in this game. The base hit from Paul O'Neill, three and two, was a 93 mile an hour fastball, and Paul did a nice job of hitting. Slider at 87. The average major league fastball is about 85. Bernie takes the pitch too low. Clements, when Clements comes down off the mound onto the grass, sometimes it's a sign that he's not sure what the call is as far as where the ball was out of the strike zone. It's his way of protesting. And of course, 
some writers had written. Roger in postseason play at the altar cage with the home plate umpire was ejected, but the umpires aren't giving him a fair deal. I don't buy that. You know, I think the umpires forget those kind of things. One and one on a splitter. This is not a great throwing outfield. Greenwell on left. Hatcher is really, I don't think he has a right fielder's arm. It's not bad. And Tinsley playing very deep for Bernie Williams in center field. One and one count. Two balls and a strike. A lot of time taken by Burial giving signs to Clements with O'Neill down there now for consecutive batters after his single and steal of second. Two and one. Foul off by Bernie a little late. Two balls, two strikes. Nothing else to do but work hard and wake your way out of it. And that's where Rick Down comes in, trying to keep Bernie's confidence level up. Barely missed down and in. Full count to Bernie Williams. Bernie called out on strikes in the second. That was the inning where Roger Clements struck out the side. William Stanley Gallego all called. Bernie then came up uh, with a couple men on and grounded back to Clements, who tagged him out. Another full count. Lofted in the left field corner. Tough call. He's got it right near the line. So Bernie. Trying to put the ball in play and a nice running catch by Mike Greenwell near the foul line. Bernie worked the count to 3 2. And the pitch away. And he went that way. Greenwell over near the line, just fair. Makes the catch before he hit the foul line and that sidewall. So there's a base open again for Mike Stanley with a ninth place hitter, Gallego, to follow. Last time the runners on second and third and Mike Stanley had a terrific pitch a ground ball that just bounced over Clemens head and found center field to drive in two. Ball one to Mike. Good to see uh, Matt Noakes who hit Clemens so well in the ballpark today. A little soft cast on gets the stitches out in a couple of days. They, you know, he had a little problem with a hammock bone on the right hand. They removed the hook. He's very powerful. Wow. There's one of the few curveballs Rogers called, and he got crossed up. He hung an overhand hook on Stanley, and Barry Hill just about fooled. That's the reaction. And Barry Hill started to move up looking for something yeah. hard, and then that break, and he had to adjust at the last moment. He hadn't thrown many of these today. He hadn't thrown many curveballs, and this hung a little high. It was really a, a, a good pitch for Mike to hit, but he was kind of fooled on it, too. Yeah, Matt Noakes, and maybe he's optimistic, thinks by June 1st he might be ready. Able to keep his legs in shape. One and one now to Stanley. Fouled out of play. One ball, two strikes. Larritz, of course, getting more playing time. With Matt Noakes out after the surgery. What a job he has done, huh? But he did the same thing last year. All he did when they put him in was hit. Yep. And hit with power and drive in runs. <laughs> One and two. Fork ball misses. Two balls, two strikes. Yankees have done a pretty good job laying off that pitch. 
they've been and the high patient. fastball. They yep. laid off the high fastball too, which is you know that's that's one of the uh, important pitches for Clemens. This pitch is uh, right across the NY logo. They haven't swung at that too often. Two balls, two strikes. Two outs, 3-3 three, three game with O'Neill at second. We are only early in May and there is a buildup of electricity in this ballpark because of these two teams. He got him. He came down from the side as he did to Gallego. This time he catches the outside corner. So Neil left stranded at second base after six here at the stadium from Skyview. 3-3 three, three ball game. The Yanks are at the stadium to battle the Indians Monday night on MSG. The look. Krug. Jerry Krug founded Krug's Big and Tall on the principles that every man should be able to find quality clothing and the service he needs. At Krug's, the customer is treated like family with free custom alterations, expert personalized service, and the guaranteed lowest prices. At Krug's, you'll find clothes that look great and fit even better, no matter what size you wear. What my father taught me, I teach my family. Cater to all your customers' needs, and they'll become part of your family. Explode into the world of Dan Pack collectibles, including stamps for beginners and investors. Find a full line of stamps from the classics to the most extraordinary. Dan Pack also specializes in coin collections for beginner and advanced collections, including gold and silver investment counseling. Dan Pack has the best selection of baseball and non-sport cards. With over one million cards in stock, we'll fill many incomplete sets from 1950 to date. And check out the latest and greatest comics. Dan Pack Collectibles. Remember, we're just like third base, a place to stop before going home. Ever wish you could take a ride on a blimp? Well, now's your chance. On Friday, May 6th, join me, Channel 10's Joanne Santilia, for a charity auction at the Meadowlands Sheraton. Bid the highest on my date package, and you'll be treated to a blimp ride over New York City and a sumptuous lunch. Vision Cable will even give you some money to help start the bidding. And all proceeds go to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Hope to see you at the auction. Crowd of a little less than 45,000 here today as we check the approaching schedule tomorrow on WPIX at 1.30. Yankees and the Red Sox and then the Indians come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night games and Thursday afternoon all on MSG Network. We go into the seventh and Billy Hatcher leads off. This game is tied 3-3. Alito Perez and a bouncer down to short. Velarde's throw to first in time. Hatcher is 0 for 3 and the first out in the seventh. Cleveland with all those young players and a revamped pitching staff. Of course, we'll see on Monday Chuck Nagy against Abbott, Kamenicki on Tuesday against Chris Nobles, the left hander, then Key against Dennis Martinez, who finally got his first win. Yep, one team, one and three now, 10 innings. And we'll see. Uh, Mark Clark in that last ball game against Melito. His turn comes around again, the last game of that Cleveland series. Here's Damon Berryhill. And the pitch is in at the knees for a strike. Berryhill hitting 233 this time in. These are the times where if Melito is going to be tired from the pitch count in the seventh inning of this ball game where pitching instead of throwing is going to really help him out. It's too low. One ball and one strike. And Melito at the moment in the mid 80s now in pitch count. One out into the seventh inning. So that pitch count's pretty good for him. Mm -hmm. Even with that, Buck Schoeller started his bullpen when Perez threw his first pitch to Billy Hatcher. And it's down. Two and one. Well, he started to get a little restless in the sixth inning when Melito faced four hitters, went three one on three of them. And so, with that in mind, the Yankees have the bullpen busy here in the seventh. And a strike on the corner. He has lost velocity. That last pitch had a little stuff on it. Probably around 90. Two balls, two strikes, the count. That's Paul Gibson in the 
Yankee bullpen as we play in the seventh. Well, Showalter looking at the switch center, but really looking at the three and four hitters. Greenwell, Vaughn, then you got Cooper after Dawson, so there's a stretch in there where three of the four are left handed, and Buck is planning ahead in case Melito gets in trouble. I think oh. Melito tried to throw Barry Hill the fork ball there, and Barry Hill just got a piece of it off the end of the bat. Two and two. He struck oh. him out. He came back with some hard stuff and got him. About as hard a pitch as he is throwing this ball game. Fifth strikeout for Perez, the second out in the seventh, and here it is. They got him at 88. But after he hung that fork ball that he just barely fouled off of the end, that must look like it was 99. Yep. It's all relative. Two outs, and here is Carlos Rodriguez who tied this game with his first big league home run in the fifth inning. And it's too high, ball one. And Benjamin Moore's stroke of brilliance. The home run for Carlos Rodriguez. He did two at Pawtucket this year. That's his first in the big leagues. Two and nothing to count. A ground ball and a strikeout in the inning. This one popped up foul. Stanley digging for it, but runs out of room. The count goes to two and one. Melito's strikeout of Berry Hill, his first in the game since the third. He had two strikeouts in the first. He got Mo Vaughn and Scott Cooper each swinging. And then in the third inning, got Tinsley. Struck him out on a high fastball and got Naring on the fork ball swinging. And then set up Barry Hill, who struck out on the high fastball with a fork ball on the pitch just before. Now it's a three and one count to Rodriguez. That's out of play, a foul ball, full count. Rodriguez up playing shortstop in the place of Valentin. He'll have the knee scoped, and they anticipate he'll be out three to four weeks. Three, two, and a line drive base hit into right. Over the head of Mike Gallego. So Rodriguez is two for three. I know you were watching the ball because he's hit the ball hard three times. I was watching Mike Stanley where the location was. And when that ball went over Mike Gallego's said Stanley jumped straight up. He was trying to give him watch. See if you can see Stanley in the picture. He will jump up trying to give Mike Gallego help. Let's see what Mike does here. We can get that. It's a sinking line drive. Get up. No, he couldn't get up that high. Here's Lee Tinsley. The little things like that thrill me, you know. I mean, just to show you the emotion sure. of a Red Sox Yankee series. We haven't seen Mike Stanley do that all year. A ball, no strikes. Just to lend a little of that catcher's leaping ability to the Yankee second baseman Mike Gallego. And even that wasn't enough no. to come up with a line drive off the bat of Rodriguez. One and one. Melito has issued three bases on balls. Two have been to Tinsley. That cost him a run in the first inning. Greenwell opened the sixth with a walk, and he was caught trying to steal. Rodriguez back at first. Tinsley is playing today. In the place of Otis Nixon. Who means a lot to this team both offensively and defensively. I mean Tinsley's a he's a fourth or fifth outfield. That's been his, his history. Not a bad player. Whoops. Bounces in out in front of the plate. Stanley was looking behind him. And the ball was out in front of the plate. And Rodriguez advances on a wild pitch. 
This caught Stanley a couple different places. One of them, I think, is on the hand or wrist. That slow mo that you're watching takes the spin off the ball. Not that there's a lot of spin on the fork ball. That's what gives it the tumbling action. Thumb comes off that pitch a lot of times. And Mike stops that out with his bare fingers. hand. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. So Rodriguez has been wild pitched into second base. A tie game, 3 3 in the seventh. So this becomes a big hitter for Perez. Ground ball, he knocks it down. And will make the play to first to retire the side. Perez to Mattingly, no runs, one hit. And a man left. Bottom of inning seven coming from Yankee Stadium. The Red Sox three, the Yankees three. Hey, would you show us your soccer moves? Anybody could be a player at their GMC truck dealer. As an official World Cup sponsor, we're giving away free World Cup savings certificates to anyone that stops by. They're filled with terrific savings on big name products from other World Cup sponsors. And while you're at it, check out our powerful starting lineup. There couldn't be a better time to come in. After all, you don't have to be coordinated, but you do have to be quick. See your Tri-State GMC truck dealer today. I'm going to show you the easiest way to buy your new home theater. The Privilege Plus card at Nobody Beats the Wiz. On any purchase of $100 or more, you pay 0% interest for 90 days. It's the same as cash. With Privilege Plus, you don't have to wait to buy a new camcorder. You don't have to save up for a new personal computer. And this time, why not get the audio system you really want? The Privilege Plus card at Nobody Beats the Wiz. It doesn't get any easier than this. Every day in 34 countries and over 300 cities, Delta Airlines takes off to the world of facts and figures, budgets, and bottom lines. And when the job is done, we bring you back to the world of mommies and daddies, boyfriends, girlfriends, and best friends. Across the seas, Bex delivers the grand tradition and taste of the German art of brewing. Bex, the number one imported German beer. It's now time for the great teamwork moment. The Yankees taking on the Boston Red Sox. This features the Yankee battery. Mike Stanley stopping that pitch to Tinsley using his bare hand. And then Perez knocking this one down with his body on the shot hit back to the mound to throw out Tinsley. Canon Technology and MC Service. One is a great reason to buy the other. Canon MCS. Scott Bankhead is the new pitcher. On for the 11th time with an unbeaten record of 3 and 0 on a 1.93 earned run average. His last outing on the 3rd of May was against Seattle. Three and two thirds of shutout baseball. You know, before Viola went down, a lot of people in baseball said that the best, best pitching staff in the American League, 1 through 11, was this Red Sox. But the makeup of the staff with Viola out now is a little different. I mean, this might have been a spot where, you know, you, you might have gotten Heskett then after Gallego, then you got three consecutive left handers, Polonia Boggs and Mattingly, but Heskett is starting tomorrow. It may change the, the nature of this game. 126 pitches for Clemens through six innings. He gave up five hits, three runs, one earned, seven strikeouts, and three walks. And here's Mike Gallego fouling the first pitch from Bankhead, strike one. So Clemens is out of there. Scott Bankhead in the game. It almost looked as if when Hobson went out to Clemens, like he talked him into staying in that ball game for one extra inning, which is what Jimmy Key did almost with uh, Buck Showalter yesterday. Nothing in two. Bankhead, formerly with the Seattle Mariners, 
He's had some arm problems. He's yeah, battled some back. Shoulder problems. Yeah, they've yep. stuck with him. He he was ineffective for a couple of years and fought his way back. A two strike count. Out to second base and Naring throws out the Yankee second baseman. So Gallegos retired. That's going to bring up Luis Polonia. Top of the order. And a strike is called. Bankhead, when he was healthy with the Seattle Ball Club, good control. He was very good at getting ahead of hitters. He threw a slider. Pretty good tight spin on it. Nothing in two. He's a little sneaky. Very aggressive move toward the hitter at home plate. He's now 30 years old. Center field. Three. That ball's going to be in there for extra bases. Let's watch Bologna run. He's around second and headed for third, and the throw is not in time. The second triple of the year for Luis Bologna. It upsets the defense. Barry Hill sets up inside. It's a little sinker ball in the middle of the plate. And you saw where Tinsley is playing. Left center field for Louis. So Polonia hits the alley. He will not need a coach. He will slow down maybe a little bit right before second to take another look. And he says, uh uh. I can beat the relay from Tinsley to the middle infielder of third. He does it easily. Let's see if that's a stall for time to see if they can get Fossus loosened up to pitch to Boggs and Mattingly. He was not throwing at the beginning of this, inf uh, this inning. Fossus threw in last night's ball game. Infield so, in. A man at third and one out. The infield comes in for the Red Sox. Butch Hobson pops out of the dugout for Boston with Wade Boggs do. So the right-hander Bankhead. Giving up the triple. That was an 85 mile per hour fastball that Polonia hit into the alley in right center field. And that's going to be it for Scott Bankhead. Fossus was open. He's looking for his jacket to come in. He was throwing just a little bit. That may have been earlier so that he could tell Butch Hobson, yes, I can give you an inning or a couple of batters. And he's going to. So that's going to be it for Bankhead. One third of an inning, one hit. He'll be responsible for the man on as he departs. And this pitching change brought to you by the AT&T Business Advantage. Let it work for you. All my life was a paper. Once plain, pure, and white. Buy two or more gallons of these featured Benjamin Moore products and get a New York Yankee hat worth $12.99 absolutely free. A stroke of brilliance from your Benjamin Moore dealer. One eight hundred six paint six for the dealer nearest you. You decorated my life. Unsatisfied with his seat, Ed sneaks onto the field to get close to the action. Okay, okay, now three guys on the bottom stacked on the bottom pyramid play is what I call it. I come around the, but the guy on top vaults in a carnival-like way. Oh, I'm cramping. I'm cramping. Whoa, whoa! Does your mouth guard taste like banana? That's security, right? I gotta go. <laughs> Next time, Ed should check the sports stadium map in the 9X yellow pages. 9X. More information, more solutions, more stuff. <laughs> you know, the guy that owns a station across the street is, uh, well, he's sort of a show-off. Real proud of this sporty new car he just bought. Only thing is, he wants to use the highest octane he can find, and uh, 
Unfortunately for him, that means Sunoco Ultra 94. It's the highest octane of any major brand. Hey, they keep catching him looking over here. <laughs> well, he's still got his pride, but I've got his gasoline. Tony Fossus enters the ball game following Clemens and Bankhead for Boston. Fossus in seven innings has given up six runs all earned on ten hits. Nevertheless, 1 0 with the earned run average of 7.71. He can be tough on left handers, as Louis Polonia found out last night. Boggs and Mattingly, different stories. Show you how tough he is, and he only pitches to left handers, usually. He hadn't given up a home run until July 27, 1991. Finally gave up one just early in May in Seattle to Ken Griffey Jr. Wade Boggs becomes the hitter. Wade has been on base all three times with two hits and a walk. He has Polonia at third with one out in the infield end. And Wade has been terrific in this situation his entire career. Less than two outs man on third. And the first pitch is wide ball one. Facing Tony Fossus. Boggs pops it back foul out of play. And the count is one and one. That delivery will make left handed batters buckle just a little bit. Get the old jelly legs. Louis probably has the contact play on with one out. Maybe even will Willie say get a good aggressive secondary lead. You see the trajectory of the ball down. You get going. Cooper and Rodriguez on the left side, Naring and Vaughn on the right side. Up. Two balls and a strike. Left handed batters don't see many fastballs from Fossus. We just saw an up in the zone. Not a hard throw. The delivery is what confuses Look where that pitch is. Belt high and it's a ball. Oh, Boggs trying to stop but could not. That's a strike. It's two and two. That was a little slider, I believe, and boy, he he throws some real sweeping roundhouse curveballs at them. They break about four feet. They'll start at a batter and be outside. This one bounces away from Barry Hill, and here comes Polonia in to score. The Yankees get the go-ahead run. It'll be charged to Bankhead as Polonia crosses the plate. This one started to sweep and bite down and bounced away. So the Yankees get a break. Trying to put a little extra spin on it. Muriel didn't really slide out a lot. He just reached for it with his glove and popped it away. Boggs fouls this one out of play. So on the wild pitch, the Yankees get a run. It's four to three, New York. Polonia's triple on the wild pitch, accounting for the go-ahead run. It's been an exciting game, but to this point, not a particularly well-played game. And a line drive caught by Naring. Boggs made a bid for another hit, but Naring grabbed it at second. Two outs. Base is empty now with the go ahead run home. Here's Don Mattingly. He's out in front, strike one. Mattingly hitless on the day. Fosses throws uh, like a big tall left hander that at one time pitched for the Yankees Steve Hamilton was about six eight. Down from the side a lot of breaking stuff. Hamilton perhaps threw a little bit harder. One and one. This one breaks and it's too high. Two balls and a strike. Oh. 
Ball three. Here's the wild pitch. Breaking ball to Wade Boggs. Pops off the glove of Barry Hill. Louis triple pays off. Ball four. Mattingly draws the walk. So here's that with having just one left hander the pen does in a close ball game. He's going to probably go with Throworth now, who comes from down under to get tired of it, but then he has not another left hander to counter to get O'Neill or later on in the ball game. Here comes Froworth. So Danny Tarnable due up, and that's it for Fosses. So Froworth will become the fourth pitcher of the day for the Red Sox. We'll be right back following this. On Saturday, May 21st, Jolly Rancher and Pathmark present Autograph Ball Day for fans 14 and under. The same mind that created a child's first camera created a professional camera with the world's fastest shutter speed. The same mind that gives you a close look at the moon lets you zoom close to a star. The same mind that perfected autofocus in photography introduced autofocus to binoculars. All this visual technology at your fingertips could only come from one mind. Only from the mind of Minolta. An island of a different kind. Peaceful people. And peace of mind. Thrilling blue seas. A thousand knees. A wonderfully fascinating holiday. Pack your bags. It's two hours away. Bermuda, a short trip to the perfect holiday. Yankees have taken a four to three lead. We're in the bottom of the seventh at Yankee Stadium. And the Red Sox make another pitching change. Todd Froworth. Froworth, the veteran right-hander. Follows Clemens, Bankhead, and Fosses to the mound. His contract was purchased by Pawtucket from Pawtucket on the third, and he paid dividends immediately. Got a save on the fourth against Seattle. He's got a rubber arm. He can give you 100 innings a year. Did at Baltimore a couple of years in a row. And Tarnable hits the first pitch on the ground to second, narrowing with a flip to Rodriguez. Well, the force play, and the Yankees are out on the seventh. They do, however, pick up the go ahead run on one hit, a wild pitch. One left on to the eighth for three Yankees. At National Car Rental, everything we do is aimed at one single goal to keep you moving. So choose National because green means go. Oh! Finally, alone together. Alfredo. Ciao, bello. Jerry, this is my brother Alfredo. Brother? And Sofia. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Are they going to be coming to the movie? Express. Right, no preset spending limit. Don't I know it? <laughs> there are ways to tell if crystal is of the highest quality, if a red wine is of the rarest vintage, if China is simply the finest there is. There are even tests for hot dogs. One is if they plump when you cook them, and ballpark beef franks do. That's because they're always made with select cuts of 100% beef. Ballpark Beef Franks, the standard by which all other hot dogs should be judged. Put your heart into it. Be tough. I am not going to pay a lot for this muffler. 
by a George, I think he's got it. Don't be bullied into paying a lot for a muffler. Now more than ever at Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. New York Yankees baseball is brought to you in part on MSG Network by Ballpark Franks. The hot dog so full of flavor they plump when you cook them. Yankees home in the Bronx. We've had a lovely day here. Cooling down a little bit though. Isn't Getting it? a little cooler as we move into the eighth inning and Paul Gibson will take over Gibson making his fifth appearance of the year with no record seven innings for Perez Melito gave up three runs two earned on four hits and see the difference in the thought process of Butch Hobson and now Buck Showalter Hobson let's bank head pitch to Gallego then let's Polonia get a triple off the right hander and Buck Showalter does a little bit the opposite he brings a left hander to face Neri because then come the left handed hitter so he's going to let Gibson get in his own trouble. Hobson tried to get Fossils to pitch out of the trouble created by Bankett. Let him start the inning and I think that's wiser. One and one to count. Especially when it's a left hander to the right hander in this ballpark. Spark is forgiving in left field. One and two. Yankees keep their bullpen busy. Gibson coming on in relief of Perez facing his first man and Bob Wickman is throwing in the bullpen here in the eighth the Yankees holding a one run lead there's Wickman staying loose. And this one in on Naring who fouls it out of play. Boston jumped to a 2 nothing lead. Yankees made it 2-1, to one, then grabbed a 3-2 lead in the fourth. Red Sox tied in the fifth, and the Yankees scored a run in the seventh. A swing and a miss. That pitch breaking down and in to Naring. It is just so fine to see a guy set up one pitch with the other. Remember the pitch before this? A fastball. He busted him on the fist. So he's got him to try and think, pull the trigger earlier, and he throws the big hook. Got him way out in front and had a bad pitch. Now Mike Greenwell. That's Mike Stanley. He really has a feel for setting up hitters. Greenwell fouls the first pitch out of play. Strike one. Greenwell with a walk in the sixth to lead off that inning against Perez and he was promptly caught stealing. Got him. This one hits him. Greenwell hit by the pitch. And that will put him on base with one out in the eighth inning. It was a pitch, I believe, designed to just move his feet and keep him off the outside part and maybe set it up for a breaking ball. And the fastball just keeps following Greenwell. And I'm just above the right elbow. And I mean, hit him solid. That'll get Butch Hobson and Charlie Moss, the trainer. Now look at Greenwell's right arm. Certainly not what Buck Schaller wanted to Buck Gibson in to get the left-handed hitters, Greenwell and then Vaughn. And he'll have to pitch out a little bit of trouble. Did you ever hit your crazy bone? Oh, Everybody yeah. in their life. Well, that's a, you know, think of a 90 mile well, maybe 85 mile or fastball hitting you right on that ulnar nerve. Your fingers go tingly, you can't feel your hand. And in this case, they hope that there's not something more severe than just a, the crazy bone nerve hit. So you fell off your horse and landed on your elbow, or what'd you do? <laughs> it seems to go on your family. I'll yeah, you, right. you, you break <laughs> elbows, what'd you do? <laughs> well, checking Greenwell over. He's had to battle through a couple of years of injuries. And he doesn't need one right now. So he's all right, going to stay in there. Meanwhile, Gibson has had to wait through that before he pitches to Mo Vaughn. And 
Vaughn is one for three. He was robbed in the fourth inning on an outstanding play by Mattingly at first base. Over to first, and he's back in there. On the GMC truck, American League batting leaders, Mo Vaughn, start of the day, sixth in the league. And a bouncer foul up the right side for a strike. So Vaughn one for three today. Mo also sitting there with a non base percentage coming in at about 450. So he's become a little more selective. With Mike Easter helping. And he's made a little progress. You know, last year. This one is low and outside, and the count is one and one. He hit 29 home runs last year. Twelve of those came against left handed pitching. He's been taught by Mike Easter to use that screen in Fenway Park. Go the other way. Whoa. He sends this one deep to right, and that ball is gone. He lines it into the upper deck. Mo Vaughn connects against the left-hander Gibson and belts his seventh home run of the year to give Boston a five to four lead. A one and one pitch fastball. The words were no sooner out of your mouth how he has learned to hit left-handed pitching. Boys, his bat speed was always good, but it took him longer to get the barrel into the hitting area. A little bit longer swing, and that has been shortened. He's got some fans here. So move on out of Seton Hall. Belts a two run home run. It comes against Gibson and gives Boston a five to four lead. This is a lightning bolt into the upper deck. Fastball. You can see where Stanley was set up. He wanted it down and away. Make Vaughn hit it to the big part of the ballpark. Center, left to right center field, and the ball drifted in. He lasered a seat. And right field upper deck. That's it for Gibson. Vaughn's 20th and 21st runs batted into the year. Bob Wickman's going to be the new pitcher, and we'll be back in a moment. A startling proposal heads for New Orleans. A hard fought contract is Chicago bound. Three sets of contact lenses are expected in Tampa by tomorrow morning. Express mail from the Postal Service will get them there overnight, guaranteed, from just $9.95. Every day, morning. overnight. Hey. We deliver for you. Any faucet can turn on water. Kohler faucets give it shape. Change the flow. Once you turn on a Kohler faucet, you'll never want plain water again. The full line of Kohler products are available at these locations. What would you do with a Motorola pager? What would you do? Mom's at home! Pager. What about you? All right, you got the pager number, right? We're, We're going, going out. out. Cool, this works. What would you do? Go anywhere, do anything, and still keep in touch with the people you want to keep in touch with. So what are you waiting for? Get the pager. It's affordable, it's portable for Motorola. Bob Wickman is the new pitcher in this 5-4 ball game. Top of the eighth, the Red Sox have just scored two on the home run by Mo Vaughn. He connected against left-hander Paul Gibson. They go with a fastball and a one-on-one -on -one pitch to Mo. Nothing wrong with the call of the fastball, but the location just wasn't there. Now Wickman faces Andre Dawson. He fouls this Got one at Mike. the feet of Mike Stanley, and it caught a part of Mike. 
You know, Steve Howe, as we look at, the guy is obviously in pain. And I'm on the protective cup, I believe. It's That'll happen more with the sinker ballers than any other pitcher because that hitter hits the top of the baseball. And if it's a hard sinker like Wickham, it's the top and a little late back in the strike zone. And occasionally it, it comes up in the wrong spot. You know, Steve Howell uh, is, can come off the DL on the 17th of May. And I really think it's, uh, it's going to be important for Gibson to give some good innings yep. before then. There's a one hopper, Velarde, with time to get Dawson. What do you think Andre would have done with that a few years ago? Oh, man. You know, the combination of his knees and the hamstring problem, and it really wasn't much of a play after Velarde came up with it. No doubt in terms of Dawson beating it out, but there was a time when Andre Dawson would have given Velarde a good run for his money on this play. That's a guy that's one of the best all round players in the game. This is the best utility man in the game right here. I don't know if you can call him utility because he plays so often. But Dawson, the way he could run, what a great throwing arm with accuracy, hit for power average. He's a Hall of Famer, that guy. There's Scott Cooper headed toward the corner, off the wall, extra bases as Cooper will stand at second with a double. Polonia's throw toward third. Cooper's seventh double of the year. He always could go the other way. Scott Cooper hit late a lot. Mike Easter opening him up has allowed him to take pitches middle of the plate in or off speed pitches and hook him the other way and that spreads out the defense. Louie was playing him toward left center field. Now here's Billy Hatcher. Wickman throws him a strike. Five four Boston leading. A hit batsman at a home run. Now with two outs a double by Cooper and a line drive to second. Caught by Gallego to retire the side. Red Sox score two runs on two hits and leave one. Bottom of the eighth inning coming. With the score, Red Sox five and the Yankees four. Lately, other long distance companies have been throwing numbers at you on how much they're positive they can save your business over AT&T. Hey, anybody can juggle numbers, right? Truth is, they're tossing around these numbers without comparing similar plans and discounts, domestic or international, because if they did, there wouldn't be much left to juggle. We're telling you this because at AT&T, we don't want anyone to do a number on you. For the true figures, call us. Let AT&T work for you. Hi from Snapple, an iced tea drinker from Atlanta writes, <laughs> are your commercials for real or are the people just actors? Ask them yourself. <laughs> the attention guy, yeah. <laughs> Come in. Uh, so the only good thing that ever came out of New York yeah. was Snapple. Come in, Shane. Oh, I can't believe it. So you don't think the people are real? Oh, we're real. <laughs> I believe you now. Made from the best stuff on earth. I'm a real person. Hello, Linus. Hey. I see your blankets out for washing. I feel so insecure. Security is why over 45 million people trust MetLife to ensure their lives and health and help plan their retirement. Does MetLife give up blankets? No, but the world famous MetLife representative is the very symbol of security in an uncertain world. You're right. I feel better already. Get Met, it pays. Across the seas, Bex delivers the grand tradition and taste of the German art of brewing. Bex, the number one imported German beer. Bottom of the eighth inning from Yankee Stadium in the top half of the frame. Mo Vaughn's home run gave the Red Sox a 5-4 lead. So the home run explosion continues, and this one exploded into the upper deck. Again, a look at that 2.17 home runs per game up over 22 percent over last year and last year's total represented a 23 percent increase 
over the year before and we have to go back to 1920 and 21 the last time we saw that kind of increase in consecutive years. And it's not just the total that you can attribute to expansion. Some of these distances opposite field. Chris Gomez with two for Detroit today. Rodriguez tying it here. First major league home run. Changes for the Red Sox. That's Lee Tinsley in left. He moves over from center and Otis Nixon in the game in center field. Greenwell out. And Ken Ryan is the new pitcher making his seventh appearance. You got to crank your bat up in a hurry against this guy. He can really throw hard. Paul O'Neill, first man to face him, and the pitch is upstairs for ball. Right now, the pitchers of record, Gibson and Froworth. We're in the Yankee eighth. O'Neill takes a strike. Ken Ryan, first couple pitches here at 90 and 92 miles per hour, and he'll crank it up higher than that. There's a breaking ball. Try to get the back side of the plate, the back door. Two balls and a strike. You know, they've almost had to have him back off a little bit. Throwing so hard and trying to get side of the strike zone and location. So he gets ahead, he probably reaches back for a little extra. And a strike call. It's two and two. Those speed guns are funny. Depends where you sit sometimes behind home plate. And sometimes low pitches, even though they might not be as fast and as true, register quicker than the high pitches. And sometimes you have obstructions from wire and screen. They give you a pretty general idea, though. Ground ball, fair, by the bag and up the left field line. It kicks back away from Tinsley, and O'Neill has himself a double. A well, two base hit to open the Yankee eighth. He represents the potential tying run. And sometimes late in the ball game, you can see the old traditional managers will put in a one run ball game or a tie. Both defenders at the corners right on the line. We saw it with Buck Rogers in Seattle. Right here, Vaughn was guarding the line against a hard thrower like Ryan. A left-hander is least likely to pull the ball down the line in right field, then left. And Cooper can get at it as he finds the left field line for a double. Now Randy Velarde is going to be the hitter. That's Greg Harris throwing in the bullpen. They started the day with a seven man bullpen only one left hander and he's already been in the game. It's only a five four game and already two three four five pitchers have been used on one side and three for Buck Showalter. Velarde looking for his first hit on the day. And a swing through this one strike one. Trying to place the ball to or through the right side, and that is tough to do against a hard thrower like this. Randy will try it again for at least one more pitch. Ryan, no record, but two saves on the year. He's not had an earned run scored against him in his four appearances thus far in the big league level this year. Randy to the right side, but foul and out of play. He's behind two strikes. Lead off double by Paul O'Neill in the Yankee eighth with the Yankees trailing by one. They've out hit Boston seven six but are down five to four. And a breaking ball popped him up on the right side. Narrowing over from second to make the catch alongside Mo Vaughn. The breaking ball upstairs at that, although it had such late quick break and as hard as he throws, Randy gets under it. Velarde had a pitch probably to hit upstairs. There's a tendency to call a pitch like this a hanger because it is a little bit upstairs, but it had such late break. Even at that, Randy with two strikes was trying to go the other way and got it off the end of the bat. Now Bernie Williams. 
Bernie is nothing out of three. You find, one. It, you find it strange, Dwayne, that if a guy's got to pull muscle to scratch twice before a ball game, like Otis Nixon was just before game time last night and today, that he comes in in the critical part of the game yeah. in center field where you got to make a lot of quick moves. I, I guess he must have said he's okay, he could do it, but that seems strange. Breaking ball, it started outside and stayed there. Two balls, no strength. There's Otis Nixon. He's had the hamstring problem. Was in the lineup at the start of the day, scratched again today as he was yesterday. And of course, uh, Atlanta let him get away because Deion Sanders, a former Yankee, been playing in center field every day against all kinds of pitching and doing well. Upstairs, Bernie Williams way ahead in the count, three and nothing. Man at second base, O'Neill. Clemens for six. There's Paul. He opened with a double up the left field line. Ryan then got the pop up from Randy Velarde. And is behind Bernie, three and nothing. A bunch of pitchers have done that so far today, pitching from behind, unlike yesterday in Jimmy Key. Three balls and a strike. Clemens for six, Bankhead for a third, Fosses for a third, Froworth for a third. Ryan one out into the eighth. And he walks Bernie Williams. First and second, one out for Mike Stanley. Well, you mentioned earlier we showed a graphic. Hobson now checking with Mike Rourke, and, you know, which pitcher's ready, and whether he's had enough time to throw. Maybe a little scouting report is coming out. There's Greg Harris with that great curveball, the ambidextrous one. Well, you talked about the walks the Yankees took on that Western swing, they averaged over seven a game. They've got five in this ball game, yep. so they continue to force opposition pitchers to work. Well, the Red Sox talk this one over. The Yankees with two men on and one out. Mike Stanley at the plate, and Daryl Boston has moved into the on deck circle. That's Harris, along with John Wathan in the bullpen. It appears Butch Hobson somehow is trying to get to Jeff Russell, who is not throwing a baseball yet. He is their closer. So it's Stanley against Ryan. And this one fouls straight back, strike one. Mike single home two runs in the fourth inning when he bounced one through the middle against Roger Clemens. Twice in this game, he has been called out on strikes. And two. Yankees and the Red Sox. The Yankees won the season series last year, seven to six. They've had some great games, and another one today. It's time to hang a hook on him. He's going fastball. Slider, boy. The curveball or slider, and it just stays inside. He can't locate that baby, can he? Got away with one to Randy Velarde. He goes 72 with this one after everything in the 90s. Again, you can see what little break there was. It came late. Yeah, those maximum effort pitchers, as Ken Ryan is, sometimes have trouble taking something off to make the breaking ball locate and breaking up. And he struck him out. Ryan 
came back to get Stanley on the one two pitch up and in two outs and Daryl Boston will pinch head for Mike Gallego here's the strikeout pitch. He showed Mike Stanley the breaking ball that stayed inside the pitch before then he comes right back high and tight. Well, this fastball really rides. So Boston. The one left handed bat the Yankees have on the bench. Comes on to pinch hit for Mike Gallego. Breaking ball, strikes him with a strike. Daryl Boston. One of the advantages Buck Schuler is finding by rotating his players early. When you get them in a game, as he did Boston yesterday, they come off fresh off the bench. And they've been sitting uh, and watching for two weeks at a time, only hitting off BP. And he's behind here, two strikes. Boston, one out of eight pinch hitting. The Yankees this year just one of 16 pinch hitting. Well, pinch hitting is the, not the only thing that they signed Boston for. Remember, they lost Deion James, an important player for this team. They found out that Daryl could play center field aside from pinch hit. You could play him regularly at any of the three outfield positions and maybe first base if you had to. And he wow. strikes him out. So Ken Ryan comes back to strike out Stanley and Boston. He got him on a 93 mile per hour fastball. Yankees do not score in the eighth on one hit and they leave two. We'll go into the ninth 5 4 Boston. Our shooting gallery at Nobody Beats the Wiz has over 50 different camcorders and you can try them all. Nobody Beats the Wiz. Come to Parkway Toyota and Englewood Cliffs. Our modern service department is now installing genuine Toyota mufflers, shocks, and struts with a Toyota lifetime guarantee. Come in for details. And while you're here, shop our fully equipped parts department for genuine Toyota parts and accessories. Whether you have a ding, a dent, or even a major collision, Parkway Toyota's modern body shop will make your car look like new again. Parkway Toyota, where customer satisfaction comes first, before, and after you buy your car. Parkway Toyota, because we give you more. Making your money make more for you. Interchange State Bank. How would you like to drive a new car every two years, carefree and virtually cost-free, and make no payments? You can at Heritage Lincoln Mercury with a half-price carefree alternative. Why pay full price when you can drive away a new 94 Lincoln Continental for only $98.99, a new Mercury Sable for only $69.99, or a new 94 Lincoln Mark 8 for only $10,888? Amazing! The half-price carefree alternative, exclusively at Heritage Lincoln Mercury, Hackensack Avenue, Hackensack. It's a one run ball game as we go into the ninth inning Yankees trail five to four Bob Wickman facing Damon Berryhill and Berryhill checked in time on the first one ball one Berryhill nothing of three two balls no strikes both starters out of this game in terms of a possible decision. Perez worked seven innings, gave up three runs, two earned on just four hits. Gibson tagged for the home run, and he is the pitcher of record right now. Two balls and a strike. Clemens gone after six for the Red Sox. Froworth is the Red Sox pitcher of record after working just a third of an inning, getting the final out on the seventh. At the knees. Two balls, two strikes. Strike on the corner. Mary Hill is out of there. 
caught looking this time. Seven strikeouts for Yankee pitching. You know, Wickman is noted for his sinker, but you can tell he's gone four seam pretty much all the way with Damon Berryhill. And he's a guy that get the ball up there on the Yankees fast gun at 90 miles an hour. And that's what he was showing Berryhill looking for sinker or maybe that slider coming in. Wickman rides the fastball away. And a strike to Carlos Rodriguez. Well, is Wickman putting some effort in this baby? He's really got good stuff today. Rodriguez two for three including his first big league home run in the fifth inning. If Wickman and Rodriguez cross paths and play together down at Columbus. Nothing in two. Might have somewhere in the minor leagues. Top of the ninth. Yankees have the top of the order due up in the bottom of the ninth inning. One ball, two strikes. You know, Buck Showalter is still learning about his young pitchers. Now, Wickman wants a conference with uh, Mike Stanley, but it'll be like with Hitchcock. He pitched him one day, he got the save, and didn't elect not to bring him in the next day. He'll have to find out with Houghton to put him in, these young pitchers, to put them in places where they are comfortable. No, this is not a tryout camp, but still, Buck is learning. And Wickman's throwing the ball as good as we've seen him throw it.